Bank of America's Savita Subramanian declared the bear market officially over in her note today, and she sees more room for this new bull market to run, writing in part, sentiment positioning, fundamentals, and supply demand support that being underinvested in stocks and cyclicals is still the key risk today. The more likely direction of surprise is still positive, she says. And one of my next guests agrees, staying bullish on the second half of the year. Let's bring in CNBC contributor Jeff Kilber. He's founder and CEO of KKM Financial. Jeff, welcome. Give me your knee-jerk thoughts about this, uh, this new bull market. Well, it's remarkable, Kelly. And we've talked often about this post-midterm election year of 2023. We saw a lot of headwinds, and we finally are seeing the bears wave the white flag. You're seeing a little bit of mercy being asked for, but here we are. I have a short-term target of the S&P 500 going up another 3.5% to 44.50. As we are in the month of June, you have to remember, there is a FOMO component, fear of missing out, but there's also end-of-quarter rebalancing. There's also some window dressing for all those money managers that are underinvested in the marketplace. So I think that pushes us higher here short term, but we have really gotten over a lot of these hurdles. We talked about earnings season. It was worse than feared. We talked about the debt ceiling. We got over that hurdle. So the traders in the VIX are re revealing the fact that nothing for the next 30 days has bothered them. And you're seeing the VIX at three-year lows with a 13 handle on it, Kelly. I know, but the low was Feb 2020, and I, I just don't take that as, like, the kind of sign you want to be flashing right now. Well, you're absolutely right. So some people look at this VIX this low. You can talk about complacency. But I'm taking the other side of the trade here because I have been cautiously optimistic all year. And when you see people not willing to pay for downside protection. Let's remember what the VIX is, Kelly. It's just an aggregate number. It's a statistical uh, calculation revealing the fact that people are buying puts and calls and they're not overly concerned short term. We may have more headwinds and geopolitical tensions arise later as growth continues to slower, but short term right now, we've won the race. The bears are waving the flag. They are getting yes. pushed back into the hurt locker. So that's where I think we go up to 4450. And we are going to have, you know, an ebb and flow of emotion coming to the market once we get past this quarter. So I think we see the market pull back here, but we are now experiencing higher lows in the S&P 500. And all those bears that were calling for the October lows to be tested, I don't hear from them anymore, Kelly. They've kind of, <laughs> you know, tucked their tail and run away. What happened? The 3200, 3400 camp. So I'm not taking a victory lap by any means, but I am saying things are better than expected. The economy, the consumer, we're seeing strength in the earnings. Again, yeah. better than feared. Their tail isn't that long. You know, it's just like a little button tail. It's hard to uh, That's right. Let me also bring in David Katz. He is CIO of Matrix uh, Asset Advisors. And David, let me ask you the question and then read off a couple of stats. Are we in a bull market that's like the bull market of the 1980s and 90s that goes on for seven years and returns 200%? Or are we in the bull market like we were in early, you know, late 08, early 09, where we were just up 24% before resuming a downtrend? Or like we saw in 2001, similarly, only about a, a 20, 25% move? We don't believe it's a straight line, but we do think stocks are poised to go higher. We think the very important thing to point out about this rally uh, from the October lows is while the S&P is up 21 percent, most areas of the market, an equally weighted S&P, small cap, mid cap, dividend stocks, value stocks, are only up about 14 percent. So you see that the market's doing better. You see it was impossible to predict before the fact. We think the rally is going to broaden out in a meaningful way, and we think there are lots of places to buy stocks now even though stocks are up significantly from their lows. Does it make you nervous, David, to bet on a broadening market, to get in on the momentum and everything now, when you see things like jobless claims, usually a leading indicator of stocks starting to tick back up? Well, Europe officially went into a recession today or this month, yet the stock market is up very significantly. So our outlook is that our economy could slow down. We could have a recession. But we do think stocks will go higher over the next six to nine months. And importantly, there are lots of really good companies at 10 to 12 times earnings. So uh, you're getting good companies at, at very reasonable prices. The other thing we're seeing is a great deal of insider buying. Insiders can sell for lots of reasons. They buy for only one reason. They think they're going to make money. So we take our cue from insiders and we, we uh, buy the stock that really haven't done a lot yet rather than chasing the seven biggest leaders that have been on a tear. Right, and we could argue the macro all day long, but at the end of the day, you like General Dynamics, PNC, Tyson, U.S. Bank, PayPal, Param. I mean, these are picks that, you know, will be kind of um, independent of whatever that argument ends up being. Just one quick follow-up question. Have we ever seen stocks not decline when a recession hits? Because that's basically what you're arguing. Well, stocks went down about 20 to 25 percent last year in anticipation of a recession. We would say that stocks are now starting to recover based on the fact that it's going to be a modest recession, 
and they're looking toward 2024, where earnings are going to be on the men and the economy is going to be on the men. That's a little weird, though, that they'd price in the recession 18 months ahead of time. It, it, it definitely is weird. This has been an odd time. We would have said three months ago we might avoid the recession, but with the Silicon Valley Bank and the banking crisis and, and banks lending less, uh, we think the odds of a recession are higher today. But we think a lot of that is discounted in stocks. All right, gentlemen, stay with me as we get to another major announcement in the auto world. GM will join Ford in using Tesla charging stations for their EVs. It's sending Tesla shares another 5 percent higher today. It's added $200 billion in market cap just over the past 11 days, which is going to tie if we're hired today for its longest winning streak in history. Tesla bull Kathy Wood wasn't even that impressed on Squawk Box this morning. She says charging's just a small part of Tesla's business. Here's what she told Andrew Ross Sorkin she's focused on. So we are in print at $2,000 uh, in 2027, and we have not counted uh, the possible revenue sources associated with this strategy. And we haven't even done much in the uh, energy storage business uh, away from electric, electric vehicles because we think the most valuable part of the business will be the scaling of vehicles in, in, to create this autonomous taxi platform. So quickly to both of you, Jeff, I'll start with you. I'm kind of looking at the technicals of this uh, rip-roaring run. What's the next move for Tesla here? Well, it looks like 275, maybe a short-term ceiling. But if you remember, uh, I was buying Tesla in December when I was at the desk there in Inglewood mm -hmm. Cliffs, and I kind of got criticized for catching a falling knife. But nonetheless, I think you <laughs> I would are never seeing, do that. I would never. Not by you, not by you, <laughs> but maybe by others. We're not going to name names, Kelly. But what's fascinating is that you're seeing GM, you're seeing Ford, call it $50 billion market cap each company. We're at $750 billion in a market cap for Tesla. And I think it really speaks to what Kathy was talking about, the, the storage and all the different components. It's not really a car company. It's a technology company. So I see 270. I actually wrote some calls on my position today at the 250 strike expiring just on the 16th of June. So that's going to collect some premium. But I do think we're going to see the market continue to move higher because we've broken some of the bears and some of those shorts had to cover this last $50. OK, that's about 30 bucks above where we are right now. David, Tesla, Ford, GM, which would you rather? Uh, none of the three. We were less enthusiastic <laughs> about Tesla than the other guests. Uh, the stock is one of seven that's been in this melt up. We think it's going to slow down. Not that it will do poorly, but it's going to slow down a lot. And we just think there are lots of other places to make money in this market. All right, gentlemen, well, David, thank you I both. would push back real quick. This is the other guest, uh, a.k.a. Killer. What you've seen with Elon Musk and all the components, all the sentiment, all the emotion pushed toward him, toward Twitter, it seems to be in the rearview mirror. So would you not think that maybe Tesla has more room to run here because that's behind him? David? There's a lot of good things going on with Tesla right now, but we think that it is fully priced. And we think a lot of what's gone on in the market is this melt up in these seven stocks, which has defied valuation in some of them. So we're just a little bit wary about them. All We'd right. rather Fair buy enough. these 10 or 12 PE growers. And what do they used to call them, the seven sisters? We'll leave it there. Thank you both. Really appreciate your time today. David Katz and Jeff Kilberg.